The future belongs to those who believe in it. There are those who simply look to the future. Then there are those who hold on to its promise. A promise made real by Vistaland. Today, Vistaland is the largest builder of homes in the Philippines, growing in billions of ways in over 38 provinces throughout the country. It is spread beyond 65 cities and municipalities with 42 vertical residences and close to 300,000 homes now built for Filipinos. Camellia has changed Filipino families forever by recreating a future that is about families reaching out to each other. Crown Asia is as much about exquisite homes as it is about the celebration of life. Brittany brought a world of luxury to Filipinos with homes that define the ultimate in sophistication and elegance. Vista Residences redefined city living by allowing one to live well and live in the moment. In its strong belief in the future, Vista Land has created homes worth passing on from generation to generation. Homes that are investments for the future, so more Filipino families can look to a breathtaking vista of tomorrow. Vista Land, building a future worth living. This is Patrick. He likes maps and camping. The outdoors and wildlife make him feel safe. He's worried about moving to Manila next year. But his parents say he'll be fine. He's set to make Vista GL Taft his university home. He's relieved to find that his target university is only a short walking distance away. And look, right across his building is a hospital. And if he has somewhere he needs to get to, there are two train stations just walking distances away. Ah, such convenience. No time wasted. He feels safe and secure even if it rains heavily. You know how it is these days. Other university homes include Vista Heights, neighboring National Teachers College, Technological Institute of the Philippines, La Consolacion College, Centro Escolar University, and San Beda College. And even up north in Chile, Baguio City, three blocks away from the Convent of the Pink Sisters is Vista Brent Hill, Baguio. A close distance away from Brent Baguio, one of the oldest and most prestigious international schools in the country. Students must feel like they're on vacation all year round. In the Katipunan area, where students love to explore the area for new places to eat and hang out, is the recently launched university home, Vista Point, which makes everything all the more accessible. At the Neo de Manila University, Miriam College, University of the Philippines, and the Center for Culinary Arts are all nearby. Along the diverse and interesting streets of Recto is Vista Recto, which is close to the University Belt area. Sarah is Patrick's older cousin who lives along Taft. Her university is only a short walking distance away. Whenever she needs to commute, she gets to the train station quickly and safely. Oh, and there are other schools and universities nearby. Vista Residences believes that there should be no safer place than home. That is why majority of the students choose Vista Residences. True to being the home within school distance, all our university residences have comfortable lobbies where your friends and study group mates can meet up. Our lobbies are guarded and equipped with CCTV systems to ensure your safety. And study pods where students can peacefully and efficiently do their schoolwork. Our university homes have e-libraries completely modern and ideal learning hubs where reading choices are endless. We also have multi-purpose halls where you can host parties, school meetings, study groups, and other activities. Keeping fit? Fitness centers are conveniently available in all our university homes. 
For students like Sarah and Patrick, schoolwork can be overwhelming at times. That's why Vista Residences designed amenities for the much-deserved breaks, where they can have fun and relax. And sky lounges that use solar panels, so you get to marvel at the views while taking care of our awesome planet. Wherever the dream school or university may be, or whether you aspire to be a future architect, visual artist, business professional, or culinary expert, Vista Residences exerts its best effort to make sure there's a comfortable, convenient, and secured home away from home. Vista Residences. Student living redefined. and vibrant. Uncover an exclusive place to live, work, and play. Immerse yourself in the excitement of an edgy and colorful world out there. out to a world full of possibilities. Walk through a different perspective and cross boundaries. Your life designed for a unified purpose, an exploration of the world. A symphony of cultures and a diverse community. The places you are most familiar with as life's precious moments happen around you. A highly distinctive development giving unparalleled privileges a landmark in a city of landmarks. Sit down to a wonderful experience and see the world beyond mere structures and open spaces. differently. Take a fabulous 360 degree sight of the cityscape.
everyone, you're tuned into Modern Living TV, and it's always been such a privilege to share knowledge with you through the stories that we have every week. And what I love the most mm -hmm. are learning from the people that we meet and that we get to know. And in a way, it's like we're one big classroom. Yes, yeah, so we have real life instructors and educators from different walks of life who we admire for their talent and skill and seek for their expertise know about the importance of lighting a space from lighting and interior designer Mark Wilson and get inspired by this art space that he designed, Bellia's Artist. Also, here's a space that's conducive for learning and where student living is redefined, Vista Residences University Series. It's time to take down notes because class is now in session. From living spaces to living life beyond its confines, this is your ultimate guide to modern living. Getting an education is a step towards achieving one's dream. And with the challenges of earning a degree, students can definitely benefit from a living environment where they can focus more on their education and live independently to pursue their passions. With this in mind, Vista Residences supports our future generation of achievers by building conducive environments where student living is redefined. As the condominium development arm of Vista Land, Vista Residences addresses the rising demand for living options for students through their university series. We were doing a lot of product studies, trying to find niches in the market. Ironically, students were being neglected. But if you look into the Filipino culture, Education really takes priority. Parents spend hundreds of thousands, even millions for tuition fee, allowances, food, and uh, school requirements. So providing an environment to hone their talents and skills is really the next phase for all of them. So with that in consideration, we felt that this was a very attractive proposition. The University Series is a collection of vertical residences located close to the country's premier colleges and universities and specifically designed to cater to the needs of students. Moreover, this built environment is a good training ground for young adults to practice self-reliance as they venture out and create a life of their own. Condominium is a simulation of independence. You have to understand that a lot of these college students are experiencing these kinds of situations for the first time. So we want to provide an environment wherein they can do all of these things and experiment and set up their own system, which would Good afternoon everybody and welcome to Visa Residences Investment Lab. My name is Gabriel Habaliana, your host for today. And I'm so glad to be here and just before the event officially starts, I have a question to ask all of you. How are you all doing this weekend? Are you refreshed or relaxed? Well, type in your answers in the comments down below if you feel either of the two or maybe even both because right now i'm feeling very relaxed and refreshed but most importantly i feel very excited to share with all of you of what we have in store for today so we are live right now on both on facebook and youtube and it'll be amazing if you could invite your friends or your family or even your colleagues to come and join us so we would like to acknowledge also our 
business partners, our investors, and our stakeholders who are also here with us today. So, today's Investment Lab highlights the infrastructure boom in Metro Manila. And the Build, Build, Build program has several ongoing projects currently in construction. And it made me very curious. What will those bring and impact the current state of the residential property sector in Metro Manila? Now, the, we have invited two distinguished guest speakers today who would discuss later on of those two very questions that I brought up here. So, are you all excited? <laughs> well, let's get on to it. But note, uh, we will be having a Q&A session at the end of our guest speaker's presentation. So, while they're presenting, you feel free to type in your questions during their presentation. And at the end of their slides, we would be able to answer and them immediately. All right. So, to introduce our first guest speaker, she graduated in cum laude at the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, with a degree of Development Communications, where she garnered the highest general weighted average for development of journalism majors and received the Faculty Medal for Academic Excellence. She worked with the United Nations Development Program and the Food and Agriculture Organization in their Haiyan Emergency Response and Rehabilitation Program. She is currently pursuing her Juris Doctor program at the UP College of Law and her executive education in the economic development in Harvard Kennedy School. She has been awarded at the Tanging Scholar Para Sa Bayan, Oblation Statue for the Virtues of Industry and Magnanimity, and one of the 10 most outstanding students in the Philippines. She is currently the chairperson of the Build, Build, Build Committee of the Department of Public Works and Highways. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Anna May Lamentilo. Hello, Ms. Anna May. Good afternoon. <laughs> ah, it appears you're muted, Ms. Anna. <laughs> Hi, Gab. Uh, I'm oh, sorry hello. about that. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm very excited to hear about the Build, Build, Build program and uh, siguro uh, let's answer some questions uh, later. Wow, ah, okay. Will do, Pop. So. When we talk about Build, 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 um, we, we don't just talk about uh, Build, Build, Build as a traffic or an infrastructure solution. We always see Build, Build, Build as a traffic uh, as a social economic strategy that, uh, that that provides jobs in the short term and that uh, solves uh, the traffic problem in the long term. So uh, next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, build, Build, Build is the boldest, most ambitious infrastructure program in history. Uh, since uh, July 2016, we've already uh, completed uh, 26,494 kilometers of roads. Next. We have also completed uh, 5,555 uh, bridges. Next. Um, whoever is controlling it, uh, uh, please keep up. Uh, 10,376 flood mitigation structure. Next. So, ayun, mukhang nagkakaroon tayo ng konting lag coming from the technical side. And then 144,925 classrooms and 187 evacuation centers. So, maliban po dyan, uh, recently we've undertaken uh, yung uh, COVID-19 facilities because Secretary Villar is now the isolation czar. And uh, 
Since the pandemic started, we have created about 653 COVID-19 facilities. Uh, pag sinasabi po natin yung build, 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 this is not just a traffic uh, solution. It's also a social economic solution. Uh, and as you can see, uh, there is a uh, increase in the number of jobs generated. In 2016, uh, we've generated 911,034 uh, jobs. In 2017, uh, 1,196,000. Uh, and uh, kung may kita niyo po, in 2018, umakit po siya ng 1.7. Uh, nagkaroon ng konting uh, decrease ng 1.2. And even during the pandemic, we are able to generate about 1.5 uh, million, million jobs. Uh, next. Uh, in total, since 2016 to 2020, we've generated a total of 6.57 million jobs. Next. Yung uh, pinakamalaki po nating project is yung Luzon Spine Expressway. So from uh, 385 kilometers, we want to increase the high standard highway network to 1,040 kilometers. So yung travel time po natin mula La Union ng Gambicol mula 8 uh, mula 16 hours magiging 8 hours and 15 minutes. And as you can see this is one of the reforms that uh, Secretary Villar did because now there is a master plan uh, that will effectively decongest EDSA and make sure that regions are more accessible. Uh, so kung may kita niyo po uh, ngayon yung La Union to Bicol mula po 16 hours ngayon 8 hours and 15 minutes na lang. Um, next, uh, yung pinakaunang project po natin is yung TPLEX. This is the Tarlac Pangasinan La Union Expressway. This is one of the first projects that we were able to resume and complete during the pandemic. Uh, nung uh, nagsimula po tayo nito, there was a three-month stoppage but because we added more workers uh, and nagkaroon po tayo ng 24-7 operations, we were able to um, deliver the project uh, in its original timeline. So this is an 89.21 kilometer expressway which traverses Tarlac all the way to Rosario, uh, La Union. Uh, the travel time between Tarlac and Rosario, La Union will be reduced from 3.5 hours to only one hour. Uh, yung, kung gusto nyo pong magpunta ngayon ng Baguio, uh, it's only 3 hours away and uh, La Union po is only 3.5 hours away. Uh, when you talk about Central Luzon Lake Expressway, this is a 30-kilometer expressway uh, from Tarlac City to Cabanatuan in Nueva Ecija. Yung travel time po natin mula po Tarlac hanggang Nueva Ecija will be reduced from 70 minutes to only 20 minutes. We also have uh, the NLEX Harbor Link segment then. Ito po yung unang project natin that we were able to resume during the pandemic. Uh, it was the litmus test kung uh, kakayanin ba na mag-resume ng construction activities uh, safely. So ito po yung pinakaunang bubble na ginawa po natin wherein all the workers were tested prior to the entry in the construction site. So yung segment 10 po natin is will connect yung Mac Arthur Highway to C3 Road. Uh, yung travel time po natin mula Valenzuela hanggang Caloocan, kung dati po abuti kayo ng isang oras, ngayon 5 minutes na lang. We also have the Radial Road 10 uh, exit ramp. This is a 2.6 kilometer four-lane elevated ramp extending the NLEX Harbor Link segment 10 to Radial Road 10. So the travel time from Port Area in Manila to NLEX will be reduced from 1 hour to 30 to 10 minutes. Uh, ang, ang side point po dito, we were able to extend it all the way to Radial Road 10 because finally we were able to accomplish the Radial Road 10 project. A project which was funded for about uh, six presidents already at hindi po yan uh, nagawa because of problems in uh, right-of-way acquisition. That's why 2016 pa lang po, nagumpisa na yung aming reforms in right-of-way acquisition. Instead of all right-of-way acquisitions being directed in the central office, dinelegate na po namin siya to its regional counterpart. So we made sure na meron ng capacity yung ating mga uh, regional offices. And uh, we all, yung next project po natin, itong Metro Manila Skyway Stage 3, this is a 17.54-kilometer expressway connecting Balintawak 
uh, in Quezon City all the way to Makati. Uh, so kung dati po abutin kayo ng dalawang oras, ngayon 20 minutes na lang po yan. The LX SLEX connector is an 8 kilometer expressway from C3 Road in Caloocan to PUP in Manila. The good thing about this expressway is that this expressway will be connected uh, to the uh, Skyway Stage 3 alignment and uh, the NLEX Harbor Link. So yung travel time po natin mula SLEX hanggang NLEX will be reduced from 2 hours to only 20 minutes. Uh, yung Claridel Bypass uh, Road Project po natin, this will reduce the travel time between NLEX Balagtas, papunta pong Maharlika Highway to only 30 minutes. Uh, we also have the Naia X Phase 2. This is a 14.85 kilometer expressway. It's a four-lane highway which connects Naia to Pagcor. What's good about the Naia X Phase 2 is it's connected to the Skyway Stage 3 alignment. At uh, yung Skyway Stage 3 alignment po natin, marami pa po tayong ramps na magbubukas. In fact, uh, all in all, we have 29 ramps in Skyway Stage 3. For Cavite Laguna Expressway, this is a 45-kilometer expressway connecting Cavitex in Kawit Cavite to Eslex Mamplasan Interchange sa Binyan Laguna. Yung travel time po natin mula Cavitex hanggang Eslex will be reduced from 1.5 hours uh, to only 45 minutes. Uh, nabuksan na po namin yung Laguna section of the Cavite Laguna Expressway. Uh, and we are gearing to opening the first section of uh, Cavite, yun pong silang section, uh, by second quarter of this year. Uh, we also have the Southeast Metro Manila Expressway. This is a combination of elevated and at-grade expressway, which will connect Skyway to Batasan Complex. This is about 34 kilometers, so the travel time from Bikutan to Batasan will be reduced from 1 hour 50 minutes to only 26 minutes. Yung BGC or Gigas Link Bridge po natin, uh, it will connect the gig and Pasig within 12 minutes. Kung dati po isang oras yun itatraverse, by June po, 12 minutes na lang po yan. We also have the Estrella Pantaleon Bridge. It's also completed already, so this will connect Makati and Mandaluyong. Uh, when this project is complete, pwede na po yung lakarin within a two-minute time frame. Uh, yung Laguna Lake Highway po natin is the first toll-free expressway uh, with bicycle lanes. So this is a 6.94-kilometer uh, divided highway with a three-meter wide protected uh, bike lane, uh, sidewalk, slow protection, drainage system, street lights. So, kompleto na po yan. So, kung dati po inaabot kayo from Taytay and Rizal to Bikuta ng isang oras, uh, when this project is completed, 30 minutes na lang po yan. We also have the C5 uh, South Link Expressway. This is um, a 7.76 lane expressway from Radial Road 1 to SLEX. So, ang travel time po natin from Radial Road 1 to C5 will be reduced from 40 minutes to 10 minutes. Yung uh, Lawton Avenue po natin, uh, we've also completed a section already. This is a 3.3 kilometer uh, highway which will connect Fort Bonifacio and Nichols Field Road. Yung Mindanao Avenue extension po natin, this is a 3.2 kilometer four lane highway which will connect NLEX to General Luis Avenue and will connect the areas of Valenzuela, North Caloocan, Quezon City and NLEX. So from that po, abuti kayo ng 130 minutes. When we're done, 20 minutes na lang po yan. Uh, the master plan uh, for the, the one of the biggest master plan, this is one of our favorite projects, is the Mega Bridge uh, Project. Uh, this is a, com a combination of uh, inter-island bridges that will eventually lead to connecting Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao via land travel. So uh, yan po ang pangarap po namin. And uh, right now, we have already started the construction for the Pangil Bay Bridge. Uh, we have completed the feasibility study for the Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge as well as the uh, um, the Panay Gimaras Negros Bridge. And uh, we're very happy uh, that uh, this is becoming into fruition and that we will eventually see in our lifetime this bridge is built. So, uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. 
And uh, I think um, I, I am ready now to answer some of your questions. Wow, all right. Um, thank you for that presentation, Miss Anna. They're all so interesting. And even I can't wait to personally go through them because talagang madikongest talagang traffic within those areas, lalo na po sa BGC Ortigas and sa Seme. <laughs> Yes. Uh, well, when you talk about the EDSA, it's a 1930 infrastructure. So now it's about 90 years old. And there has been no major infrastructure project, uh, except maybe in the 1970s when the EDSA alignment was extended to TAP. So uh, people are saying, bakit hindi rin repair ang EDSA? Because there is no alternate road to EDSA. So first we build the alternate routes so that we can eventually repair EDSA in a long term. Hindi yung pache-pache, kasi pagka pache-pache lang, and uh, yung, short, yung solution may short term, then uh, magiging uh, panandalian lamang yung uh, mga initiatives. Wow, like, uh, that's interesting to hear about Miss Anna. So, I guess, you know, a lot of, uh, of our viewers have questions already. So, yan, I think our first question already is, Hi, any update on the subway project of the government uh, from Ms. Diane Reyes? Uh, well, it's being uh, implemented already. In fact, the boring machine is already here. Uh, meron din pong tinatayo. It's a DOTR project. At uh, meron na po tayong kinatawag na subway school. So dito, ang, ang, this is the reason why we, why we buy into foreign technology because we want to have the technology present in the country. So, for example, uh, yung subway school po natin, tuturuan natin yung ating mga kapwa Pinoy kung paano po mag-operate at mag-maintain dito yung subway infrastructure po natin. Um, and uh, I think si na Secretary Art is confident that we'd be, we'd be able to open a section of the subway project by 2022. So this is something that we look forward. Uh, the entire project, hindi po natin yan matatapos within the term of the president, but uh, we will be able to open uh, a section of the project uh, before his term ends. Oh, okay, that's oh, that's awesome to hear. But <laughs> so for everyone, I know, keep asking more questions. So from Miss Dred Ragas, uh, given the improved connectivity of Metro Manila to nearby provinces, are we expecting more that people in Metro Manila will go further out or people outside Manila will come in? Oh, nice. Interesting question, Miss Dred. Ang, ang lagi namin sinasabi, it's always self-sovereignty. Uh, the government will not impose where you want to live, but ultimately we want to give you the options of where you want to live because um that day we don't have an option if you work in ortigas you have to stay within the vicinity of ortigas if you want um a semblance of a of a life because yung traffic that kakaiba diba? so for example if you live in las Piña city and you want to study in up Diliman, you would need to invest at least five hours of your time just to go back and forth uh, but now with the new alignment, it will be 30 minutes away. So this is something that we want to give you an option for. If you want to live in the provinces, you can live in the provinces. If you want to live in Metro Manila, then you have the option to do so. But now Pampanga is only 40 minutes away from Quezon City. So because of the Luzon Spine Expressway Network and soon the more provinces will be closer to Metro Manila. So people can opt to actually stay um, in the provinces if they want to, like Bulacan, uh, uh, Tarlac, Nueva Ecija, Pangasinan, etc. Nung nagpunta ako ng Pangasinan, it was only one and a half to two hours. So uh, malaki yung uh, difference as far as travel time is concerned. All right. So thank you for that answer miss anna that's really cool to hear so our next question is from miss mona abril uh, will there be any plans po for bike friendly expressways given the increased interest in it nowadays well <laughs> Dato, we are really, uh, supportive about it because as early as 2016 we made uh si secretary we are already made uh, reforms on 
pedestrian infrastructure. We noticed that there were no pedestrian infrastructure and it was time to build more. Um, that's why uh, Laguna Lake Highway was built with segregated bicycle lanes and it follows international standards. Pero hindi lang po yan. If you go to the Pasig Marikina Flood Control Project, it will also have uh, bicycle lanes dun po sa gilid niya. The new bridges uh, in uh, BGC or Tigas, it will have uh, pedestrian infrastructure. So people can either walk or bring their bicycles uh, there. So I guess ito po ay isa lamang dun sa mga reforms. At ang pinakamaganda po ngayon, uh, as early as the planning stages, makikita nyo na po, ini-incorporate na nila yung bicycle sa plano para mapag-uusapan na kaya ba, uh, is it feasible or uh, hindi. Alright, so nice. That's actually awesome to hear. <laughs> Sakto, bike. Nagbabike din po ako eh, ma'am. <laughs> ah, kaya pala. Uh, so yun, mas marami ka na rin options in the future. And it's not just in Metro Manila. If you go to Leyte, the tight embankment project has bicycle lanes. If you go to Boracay, the Boracay Circumferential uh, Road will have uh, bicycle lanes. If you go to Pangasinan, you, you have the Tondaligan uh, Bay Walk, which is bicycle lane. So uh, the the reforms is not only concentrated in Metro Manila. In fact, if you go to Cagayan de Oro Coastal Road, there will be bicycle lane. So this is something that we want to change. I mean, we won't be here forever, but at least these are reforms in the department that we hope that the next administration will continue. All right. I'll keep that in mind, Paul. No. So our next question is uh, from Miss Bea Tan. Which northernmost island in the Philippines to the southernmost island na kaya nang i-connect ng mega bridge project? Actually, um, it's going to be a series. Uh, the uh, yung San Juanico Bridge natin, it's less than 2 kilometers. Uh, yung ating Panay Guimaras Negros is about 30. So you can only imagine the amount of work that we need to put for. I, I cannot know kung ano yung pinaka northernmost part but i think one of the priorities would be the pataan cavite uh, interlink bridge for Luzon, panay kimaras negros for misayas and then the pangil bay bridge for mindanao we are also uh, doing the davao samal connector bridge uh, very soon oh, okay that's really nice to hear but i'm sadly that's the only time that we have for your q a session po. so on behalf of everybody here we would like to give all of our appreciation for joining us today and for sharing your excellent insights for the infrastructures like thank you so much po, ma and, uh, thank you very much all right stay safe for mom <laughs> Oh, all right, so that was a very interesting topic shared by Ms. Lamentilo. But I'm sure all of you still have questions regarding the infrastructures of the build, build, build. So feel free to send them from time to time in our comments down below. And we will consolidate all of them so that we can answer at a different time. All right, so now that we heard of the many infrastructures that will surface here in the Philippines, but most importantly in Metro Manila. I'm sure that all of you are excited to hear on how they would influence immediately the residential property sector. And it'll be answered by our next speaker. He studied in Ateneo de Manila University and took up his master's degree in business management in the Asian Institute of Management. And after he graduated, he set up his own real estate consultancy firm where he gained experience through research, analytics, and marketing. For over 25 years in real estate, he has become an expert in that field. In 2011, he was the top seven in the National Brokers Examination and became the co-founder and general manager of Land Excel Consulting. And he also co-founded and was the former president of Vertex Land. Today, he is currently the Director of Research and Consultancy in Lichu Property Consultants. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Roy Amado Goles Jr.
Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you uh, for hello. the introduction. <laughs> yes. Good afternoon, hi, sir. Hi, good, afternoon. good afternoon, everyone. Uh, who's on the call? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I was tasked by uh, Vista Land to do a talk about the impact of uh, the infrastructure boom of the current government to residential real estate, specifically um, residential condominiums. And I, I hope I'll be able to address uh, any questions later regarding the matter. Okay, next slide, please. So this presentation will be cut up into five parts. Number one, uh, I'll do a short uh, presentation on roads, rails, and bridges. While in the previous uh, presentation, it was more or less overall, this time we'll be concentrating specifically with Metro Manila. Now, the second will be um, what would be the influence of these infrastructure projects to, to, to the area where they're coming up and to real estate. And lastly, um, we'll, I'll be making a short presentation on the Vista uh, condominium portfolio. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, um, why do we have currently the BBB program and what does it mean to Metro Manila residents? Yeah, so the BBB program or the roads, rails, and bridges uh, infrastructure projects is really a fiscal stimulus for the economy. Um, we are now in probably one of our worst economic recessions ever. Uh, like at the end of 2020, we had a negative 9.5% GDP growth. So what the government is doing is trying to pump up the economy uh, through infrastructure projects. Um, the, the budget for these projects um, are thrown into, into the market um, for, for infrastructure with the hope that the goods and services that are being paid for will create jobs and will at least stimulate uh, economic growth. But uh, the problems that the roads, uh, rails, and bridges that are um, solving really is to address traffic congestion in Metro Manila. So um, fixing that problem of traffic, the hope is that it will reduce the daily losses spent in traffic, which was estimated at 3.5 billion a day by JICA. At the same time for us individually, we hope that the uh, improved uh, transit connectivity will be better from home to work. And the result, which we all hope for, would be better quality of life. Um, number one, it will save us two to three hours of travel time spent in traffic. And number two, um, this can be uh, used more for productive work, recreation, or rest. Okay, next slide, please. So today, um, while the earlier speaker mentioned about 26,000 kilometers of uh, roads, rails, bridges all over the Philippines, in Metro Manila, we counted about 198 kilometers that will enc- encompass four roads, four bridges, and four, uh, six rails. Now, um, we are really looking at the whole Mega Manila area. So this includes areas such as Cavite, Laguna, uh, Batangas, as well as uh, Bulacan uh, and parts of Pampanga. Now, what are the benefits to the residents? Number one, the, this infrastructure projects connects offices in the central business districts to the homes of the workers, okay? So the, we can see improved accessibility. Um, the, we'll see later the mega subway actually connects all the way to the airport, um, into schools, into CBDs. And of course, the added convenience of the uh, subway and all the rail and roads make um, for a better location for the homes of the buyers. What does it mean? With, with this connectivity, wherever you decide to buy, as long as it's near the subway stations, you can now go to your office in the CBDs of Ortigas, Makati, um, uh, BGC much faster. Next slide, please. Okay, so there are about six uh, major central business districts in, the, in Metro Manila. And this is where most of the offices are and where most of the offices will be built in the future, okay? So these are, well, parts of Quezon City, Ortigas, um, Bonifacio Global City, Makati, Alabang, and the Bay Area. So we, we, will, uh, we will show later that the connectivity will benefit um, 
primarily in Metro Manila, the office workers who work in these areas. Next slide, please. Okay, so infrastructure influence. Um, for the roads, for example, the north-south uh, connector road, um, while we say that, okay, these are all about traffic, it, um, and it's true, there will be shorter travel times from place of work to place of home, um, and it will be ideal for, well, now with the reduced uh, travel time, you, as was mentioned earlier, you can, you can actually travel um, from your home in Laguna to Makati or from Bulacan to Ortigas in less than an hour. Um, <clears throat> for the rails, there will be a big uh, improvement in terms of convenience and commuting. So areas within a 500 to 700 meters radius of the subway station in all likelihood will experience demand. The lifestyle that we see abroad, let's say in Europe or in Japan or Hong Kong, where people actually um, walk from their home to the subway or the rail and go to work, will start happening uh, uh, only because uh, of the added uh, capacity. Right now, the MRT stations are, are filled to the brim and uh, there's really, it's really not a pleasant experience lining up uh, uh, going into your uh, uh, station near your house. Now for bridges, uh, for example, the BGC or Tigas link, um, the shorter travel time from BGC to Mandaluyong will likely result to residential prices in Mandaluyong area to start catching up to prices in BGC. Not quite that high, but in all likelihood, you will see uh, price improvements. Okay, next slide, please. Now, case study of Ayala Alabang Lots. So this is a what we can say a direct impact of infrastructure projects to a residential subdivision. So in 22, sorry, in 2002, when the Skyway was completed, there was a 14% growth um, of land prices in Ayala Alabang from the year before. And then for the next um, 12 years or so, the growth of the land prices um, flattened to about 5% per annum until um, 2015 when the MCX uh, Expressway was completed. And then we saw a price increase of about 20% uh, the year previous. So we see here the direct impact of infrastructure uh, projects opening on land values where they actually uh, connect. Next slide, please. Okay, and uh, the map on the right is the Mega uh, Manila subway, and the map on the left are the sorry, and the table on the left are the stations. Um, <clears throat> as with the MRT two, we see that the Mega Manila sub sta uh, subway stations um, are connected to the CBDs, so primarily they will service the office workers uh, who have offices in those areas. Now the Yellow uh, boxes there that you see are the areas where I think, as was mentioned by the project team, the Vista Residences projects are located. So what we can see here is that the projects of Vista Land are actually well situated with this uh, Mega Manila subway. Okay, um, next slide, please. Now, the third case study that I will present is that... Uh, the BGC Ortiga Slink Bridge. <clears throat> so um, in this case, again, the prices of Mandaluyong, which is okay, today there's about a 45 to 60% price difference um, of condominiums in BGC versus other locations across the bridge. So in Capitolio, it's about only 52%. In Ortiga CBD, about 47, Mandaluyong 45, and Pasig 60% of BGC. This connector road will likely um, directly impact the pricing of those projects very near to this uh, bridge. As well as, of course, the other bridge, which is the Australia Pantaleon Bridge in Makati, uh, when it connects to the Mandaluyong side also, um, we will see a lot of uh, demand and price increase in Mandaluyong. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, for increased 
So what's the direct impact to residential uh, real estate? Well, uh, primarily we see better demand in terms of prices and rents. Okay, so demand um, will be happening and improving due to the connectivity and convenience. So what the infra projects in Metro Manila really do is to connect places of work, places of recreation, places of worship, shopping, education, and health. Okay. Um, what we will also see is that the improved urban transit corridors uh, that are being built will result to in-migration of the population into the areas where they open up or end. Okay. Now, for the rents, um, we have a very young population in the Philippines today, about 24 years old. Um, so there is a substantial demand for residential condominiums, uh, especially in Metro Manila, where, where later we will see the number and amount of potential uh, beds that will be needed in the next five to six years. And this uh, will happen mostly in the CBDs or central business districts where most of the office space um, are being built. Okay. And uh, those who are looking for more discounted prices will look at the fringes of the CBDs as well as near the rail stations. Um, they will become ideal for renters and home buyers. Now, we did a study uh, of uh, rents near the MRT stations and we found out that the condominiums near the MRT stations generate about 5% to 16% uh, premium or a higher rent than those projects uh, much farther away. Now, in terms of prices, um, we see that the stations um, generate a premium on pricing of about 16% and higher, as well as they have better resale value. So primarily the Metro Manila infrastructure projects benefit really the office workers in the CBDs. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so office supply versus potential uh, new residential demand. Okay, so um, what this slide is saying is that in the last 60 years, about 12.98 million square meters of office space today um, uh, were built. But in the next six years, there will be about 3.5 million square meters of office space. Okay. This 3.5 million square meters of office space can correlate directly to demand of residential beds or units or rooms. Okay. Um, the residential demand will grow with the office space supply. Okay, so if we assume a ratio of about 10 square meters of office space per employee, so that's 3.5 million divided by 10. So we're really looking at about 350,000 new jobs in the central business districts of Makati, Ortigas, Bonifacio City, Taguig, Quezon, Bay Area, and Alabang. Now, the typical ratio of jobs to residential beds is on a one-to-one -one ratio, especially for the new grads. So potentially we have about 350,000 new beds in the next six years. And let's say uh, for every condo unit, it's a couple. So you, you will probably have about at least 175,000 potential demand uh, of uh, studios. Now, whether they are going to be bought or rented and whether there will be uh, move-outs or move-ins um, will really depend on the supply. Next slide, please. Okay, so another metric we're looking at in calculating demand is how many uh, college graduates were there or will be there every year. So in Metro Manila, we have about 155,737 new college graduates. And this is the raw material or the, or the employees that the offices, especially the call centers and the BPOs, um, would look at when locating in the central business districts. So in total, if you add Bulacan, Pampanga, Cavite, and Laguna, that's actually about 250,000 new graduates. That's just 2018, 2019. So if we make it 2020, 2021, um, so you probably have about maybe 500, 600,000 uh, new graduates for the last three years. Okay. 
Um, so this translates to actual demand also of uh, rentable uh, residential units. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so I guess this will be what most of the investors or brokers would be looking at. Okay, so um, what we're looking at is uh, the MRT3 with uh, some stations highlighted. That's one, two, three, four. Um, us comparing the price and rent proximity. What does that mean? Um, we compared um, residential condominium projects, um, those who are much near the station and those that are a bit farther. Okay. Um, so what we found out, for example, in Quezon Avenue, um, the condominium much nearer to the station, MRT station, generates a premium of plus 33% in terms of residential condominium price per square meter versus a condominium that's much farther away. So that's about, uh, even if, if it's just 300 to 600 meters away, we see a significant price difference. And in terms of rent for the same condominiums, we see that it has a premium of about 16% on top of the other condominiums much farther away. Okay, so in, in Kamuning area, we found out that the price proximity is about 31% more and the rent at about 8% more. Now in Shaw, uh, the, the price proximity is not as high at it's only 16% and rent at 5%. I think only because um, it, the, the samples we got were too near the Ortigas uh, CBD. And for Magallanes, the price proximity is much more pronounced at 45% versus uh, the, the condominiums much farther away and the rent at 12%. So the developments we chose here are not necessarily Vista land. Uh, so we, we chose uh, developments regardless of uh, who the developers are. Now the circles on the right, um, this is the, these are the projects in the fringe uh, of the CBDs. So they're neither near the, sub, uh, the MRT stations, nor are they that near the, the, the CBDs, the central business districts. So we see that they are actually from 44 to 56% cheaper than those much near the um, MRT stations. So in this slide, we can clearly see the, the advantage of investing in projects that are quite accessible to the MRT stations. Ergo, when we go to the Metro Manila subway, we can expect that those um, projects much nearer the new subway stations will most likely also charge a higher um, price as well as higher rents. This in effect makes it better uh, for an owner or investor to resell it at a better price or to rent it out to, to tenants. Okay, next slide please. Okay, so um, for the Vista Residences portfolio, what we found out when they uh, asked us to evaluate and take a look was that um, the portfolio of Vista Residences is very well positioned in locations near CBDs or near stations and that they have a proven capital growth. Okay, um, In fact, they range from about to about an average of 11%, 9 to 11% per year. Um, in increase in pricing, or um, they also have uh, on, that's on top of the re rental income that you get when you sell uh, when you lease out the units. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so this is a map of the projects of Vista Residences. So the top left you have the Manila projects. Top right you have Quezon City. Then you have Mandaluyong, Pasig, Makati. BGC and the gig. So if you look at the map, you can see that they are actually all along uh, major highways and major uh, uh, roads, as well as in the new infrastructure uh, locations. Okay, next slide, please. 
And lastly, why should you invest in Vista? Well, um, they have already a proven track record uh, in terms of capital uh, value appreciation. So if you take a look at the uh, squiggly line that forms a box, that's the capital gain per square meter of projects um, in various areas uh, in Metro Manila. So in Makati, you have Loriano de Trevi. It was launched at 84,000 per square meter in 2006. Today, the price is around 318,000 per square meter. So that's a gain of about 234,000 uh, per square meter or about an annual growth rate of 9%. Okay. Now, the currency in Artigas, which, is, uh, which was launched in 2010, you can see also a 10% uh, annual growth rate in terms of pricing. So if you had invested in these projects in, in those years, you would have seen your money grow by about 9 to 10%. And if you had bought into Loriano de Trevi and rented it out, you would have also probably earned around six to nine percent rental income. Okay, so why why should you invest in Vista? Well, based on their uh, performance, based on experience, we can see a stable and steady capital appreciation, and that the locations um, are in demand. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, and uh, to close uh, this presentation, I'd like to say that um, the current COVID situation is presenting us really with an opportunity to invest in real estate. Uh, most developers nowadays offer, especially Vista, um, EC payment terms as well as stretched uh, payment terms, making the monthly amortization very aff affordable. Um, that should be an opportunity that we should take okay um today we are already at probably the lowest uh point of our economy we are in a recession but any investment now in real estate will most likely uh only see growth uh, because post pandemic or after the vaccines have been rolled out and everybody or most have uh, the vaccines already we can expect the economy to start growing. We can expect the economy to, to be more positive. We can expect the economy to, to, to open up. So it's wise for us to position ourselves, our money, our investments today to take advantage of the upside. Okay. There are many choices out there, but uh, we see that Vista Land has already a proven track record of completion and delivery. They're also in good locations and have very attractive price appreciation. So um, when looking at an investment in condominiums, it would be wise to take a look at, um, are they in the CBD? Are they near um, infra infrastructure projects, especially the upcoming uh, subways or the MRT? Because we can expect that these projects will have better rents and higher resale values. Okay. Um, so uh, thank you, everyone, for allowing me the opportunity to speak before you. Good afternoon. Wow. Um, thank you, Mr. Roy, for that wonderful presentation. Like, you shared a lot of very interesting insights, and it's very factual. Like, it took me a while to comprehend, but I got it on midway. So, but yeah, like, it's really interesting, like, on how the residential property would um, effect uh, with the infrastructures that you've mentioned so i guess for our first question well there's a lot already um from miss jumar er, domingo lopez um, how about the fringes of cbds should we expect a price increase in those areas um overall the residential market is growing despite the covid situation um, there is just too much demand. So if you can, if you remember the the, the slide I presented, that's three hundred fifty thousand of potential new office workers in Metro Manila for the next six years, and every year we can only see about sixty to seventy thousand units being registered with the DHSUD or the formerly uh, the House 
Housing Land Use Regulatory Board, so HLURB. So the housing demand is not really being met by developers, much more than the government. So the fringes will still expect price increases, but it's more of those areas that um, have been opened up because of infra, where you will see a dramatic increase in price. An example is the Balintawak area, where you see now Ayala and other developers congregating because of the new uh, accesses towards it. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. That's okay. That's really cool to hear, sir. Okay, from Sijan Nunez, um, how would the emergence of Mega Manila offices and residential properties affect the prices and demand of the CBD residential market? Okay, interesting question. Thank you, Ms. <coughs> Nunez. Okay, so so there are uh, new townships that have been developed, let's say in the Laguna area, for example, New Valley or in Pampanga, you have the Alviera as well as other projects uh, yeah, that uh, supposedly uh, will pull development outside of Metro Manila. However, most of the uh, top of the line offices are still going, going to be in the CBD of Metro Manila, Makati, BGC, Ortigas. And this will be the buildings that will be chosen by our by foreign companies to locate um, large call centers, large BPOs, large multinationals will still stay in what we call in real estate core core markets. So if the employment stays in the core markets, then there will be continuous demand um, of residential uh, units in the CBD itself and near the stations and in the fringe. So in terms of pricing, um, we will still see that the core markets uh, will generate higher uh, higher price increases and higher per square meter prices. Okay, I, uh, thank you for that answer, sir. Okay, next one from Miguel Iduela. Um, will emerging CBDs outside Metro Manila get a share of current demand in of Metro Manila CBDs or would it split the market? Oh, interesting question. Miguel, okay, so you. it's uh, that's a good question. No? It's not really a zero-sum game. No? It's, a, it's an addition. So there will be growth in the townships outside of Metro Manila. But it will be an add-on to the growth that's going to happen or that will be happening in Metro Manila. So as I said uh, previously, the demand will still stay in the core markets. And... Uh, because there's not enough density um, in the, uh, sorry if it's too technical, if there's not enough demand uh, for office space uh, in areas outside of uh, Metro Manila. Okay, well, I hope that answers your question, Miguel. Right, thank you. <laughs> so the next question from Rem B. Almero, what's the impact of the pandemic to the real estate <coughs> industry? specifically the condominium sector, given the fact that students are in flexible learning and employers encouraging work from homes? Oh, okay, very nice. Thank you for that question. Uh, very difficult question to answer. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> what we have found over a year already is that the, not all employees um, can do work from home, especially if they live in a large household and if they don't have, let's say, a, a place to work uh, quietly or or if they live in a cramped, let's say, uh, home, um, we see that about maybe 20-25% of employees in large companies can do work from home, especially those in IT who do not really need to go to the office uh, to do their jobs. However, um, the lack of collaboration the lack of interaction with your co-workers, with your colleagues, is uh, putting a heavy toll on the psyche of the person, of the worker. Uh, we are social beings, so there seems to be a need, well, there is a need for us to reach out and uh, interact with others. Now, in terms of the uh, student market, it's probably the same thing, 
where you know for their personal uh, development the students really need to interact with other students uh, in their you know in the typical way that we used to do and I think it will be coming back soon um, so uh, the demand for rent of condominiums will likely come back what was just impacted uh, was that the in the Bay Area, when the Pogo sector got, uh, uh, were not able to invite back their employees, so the the residential rent market there uh, went uh, flat to down. And of course, the 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 condo rental in the school areas for the students, dormitories, uh, bed space, also got impacted. Okay. Thank you. All right, nice. Thank you for that answer. So. From Ethel Bangal, uh, aside from condominiums being a good investment at this point in the economy, what could be further uh, features or amenities that could entice more investors? Ah, that's a good question, Ms. Ethel. <laughs> okay, um, so the I think developers nowadays make it easy for um, the target market, the investors, to put in initial money to participate in real estate investing. So instead of the usual, let's say one, two years, you can extend it to maybe three or more. And then um, as much as possible to lower the monthly amortization. Um, what can entice more people to, to invest would be if there's a, let's say a leasing or rental program that the company can offer to, to, to buyers. So let's say an OFW um, decides to invest in one of your buildings in Makati, um, and then you offer uh, uh, to manage their unit in terms of you know support, let's say cleaning uh, uh, and uh, renting it out to tenants as well as collection um, and making sure that your unit is well maintained. That can be an added uh, feature for your buyers to 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 want to invest in you. So it will be a worry-free investment wow. all right so that's really nice to hear but i'm afraid that's all the time we have for your q a session mr goles so um on behalf of everybody here we would like to give you all of our appreciation for joining us today and really presenting to us of the value of real estate and what it will come forth from the future especially in conjunction with the build 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 infrastructure project so thank you so much uh mr go <laughs> okay thank you gabriel and uh, thank, thank you. you for inviting me here all right it is my honor sir <laughs> okay bye sir well all right so that was really a very like amazing like presentation and i really hope all of you um got a lot from it but for those who still have a lot of questions regarding the topics discussed today's investment lab uh, please leave a comment down below and again just like with Ms. Lamitilos, we will be able to answer them soon. So, listening to our two guest speakers discussing infrastructures and real estate has been an honor like witnessing what they have to share and because of their insights, I think it is prime time for all of you to be interested in our diverse lineup of Vista Residences projects which are in various stages of development. They are located in the prime areas within Metro Manila and alongside the infrastructure projects that were mentioned earlier by our guest speakers. So, for the first project I would like to bring you is the Courtyard Towers. It is located in Taguig where you can live a top-tier global lifestyle as this pre-selling project is just a 15-minute drive to Bonifacio Global City whilst delivering a resort-inspired ambience within the urban city. The next one is a residential tower, complete with interesting features and amenities tastefully designed for the cosmopolitan and business district of Ortega Center. The Spectrum, which is a pre-selling project, as well as the Currency, a ready-for-occupancy project located in Pasig City. The next is Salcedo Square. It gives hip urban dwellers the modern abode that makes life even more convenient. It stands proud along LP Leviste Street at the center of Salcedo Village, Makati City. Doriana de Trevi 
is a Grand Tree Tower development that comes with its own commercial complex meant to provide quick shopping options to its residents. And it is located in Chino Rosas, Makati City. The next tower is Vista Shaw. It shares the same name as its location. And this vertical condominium rises on the prime land of Shaw Boulevard in the booming city of Mandaluyo. It has a captivating view of the city. And of course, you can see one of the finest golf courses in the country, the Wak Wak Golf Course. This project is really an investment, as beautiful as its view. Next is Kizuna Heights. Your Ikigai lifestyle starts here, as this Japanese-inspired pre-selling project is also a joint venture with Mitsubishi Estate. Kizuna Heights is designed for university students who wish to study in Taft Avenue or simply a future place to stay in. The next project is Hawthorne Heights. It is a pre-selling project in Katipunan, Quezon City. The property is perfectly fit for university students who wish to attend in Ateneo, Miriam, and UP because it is just a stone's throw away to those three prestigious institutions or young professionals seeking a career start in Quezon City. The next is the Symphony Towers. This tower allows you to live your work, live, and play lifestyle within QC's business district of South Triangle. And it lets you enjoy the right balance of comfort and convenience that comes at a premium. The next one is Will Tower. <laughs> this serves as your urban sanctuary in harmony with city life because this project is located in between three central business centers, Timog Avenue, Quezon Avenue, and the Epifanio De Los Santos Avenue, or you may know it as EDSA. These two ready-for-occupancy towers are located at the heart of Quezon City. So wow, all these projects look amazing. And of course, they're in various stages of development. And if you have any further questions about those and interest in Vista Residences as a whole, please be sure to follow our official Facebook page for more details. Or you can visit our website at www.vistaresidences.com.ph for more information. And, of course, there are many others in key different locations across the Philippines. So again, thank you so much for joining us and in being interested in this event. And I really hope, hope that all of you learned a lot in today's event. And be sure to stay safe. And remember to make the smart choice with Vista Residences. And have a wonderful day, everyone. This has been Gabriel Haviliana, your host for today, signing off, and see you all next time. Bye, guys. Nothing is as precious as life's fleeting moments. We see the things that matter most. Vista Residences lets you live in these moments by being just a heartbeat away from everything. Whether in pursuit of dreams or in pursuit of the best things in life, no one should be too far away from where their passions reside. We create beautiful spaces to live in in the middle of the city so anyone can make of the moment and live those moments beautifully. At Vista Residences, we're proud to build according to the idea of the global Filipino. We set our sights to global standards while keeping to a distinctly Filipino touch. At Vista Residences, one will never be away from where the heart is, because we will always be in the heart of the city. Whether for leasing or for owning, make an investment that matters. Invest in Vista Residences. It is where life's best moments happen.